because two physics chapter eight electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves why to the kantiga tarangal waves with electric property and also magnetic properties you know physics is the study of energy and the forms of energy one is matter second one is radiation matter and radiation are the two forms of energy in the universe one is matter second one is radiation you know the expression for matter e equals mc square you know e energy m mass amount of matter c constant speed of light in free space the value of c is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second this equation by albert einstein from the theory of relativity and for radiation e is equal to h nu this is the expression for radiation where h is a constant and this constant h we call planck's constant max planck the value of h is 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to Minus 34 JS. JS means joule second. This means 6.6 .6 by 10 raised to 34 JS. 6.6 .6 divided by 10 raised to 34 JS. The value of H is actually 0 0.1234567891011213 This is the value. This much joule seconds, very minute one. That is the value of Planck's constant. Point 0.33 digits. 6, 6, like that. Newton of frequency. Usually radiations are expressed in frequency or in wavelength. You know the unit for frequency hertz, Rudolf hertz, hertz, 20 hertz means 20 per second. 20,000 hertz is 20,000 per second. It's a audible sound for human ear. 20 hertz is the lower limit of audibility. 20 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 20,000 hertz is the upper limit of audibility. This is audible sound. Hertz is the unit for frequency. Usually, light is expressed in wavelength. You know, C equals nu lambda or V is equal to F lambda. V velocity, but key velocity, F frequency, new frequency, lambda is wavelength. So, lambda equals C by nu. nu uh, lambda is proportional to 1 by nu. When frequency decreases, wavelength increases. When wavelength decreases, frequency increases. So, the value of nu equals C by lambda. So, this equation can also be written as Hz by lambda. Hz by lambda. This is in wavelength, C constant, H constant, C speed of light in free space, 3 meter raised to 8 meter per second, H Planck's constant, lambda wavelength. So this is E equals H U, this equation is by Max Planck from the quantum theory of light. You know according to quantum theory, light consists of small packets of quanta, the new name is photon, not proton, but photon. The energy of a photon that is given by E equals H nu. One quanta energy that is E equals H nu. So these are the two expressions for matter and radiation. Material, matter, E equals mc square. 
This is theory of relativity by, relativity by Albert Einstein. Radiation equals h nu. This is quantum theory by Max Planck. These two expressions for matter and uh, radiation. You know, in radiation, there are mainly four theories. There are four theories in radiation. The first one is theories of radiation. Theories of radiation. The first one is corpuscular theory. Corpuscular, corpuscular theory by Sir Isaac Newton. This is the first theory of radiation. Light consists of small packets of corpuscles. Corpuscles means tiny elastic particles, and the corpuscles. Falling on the eye produces a sensation of light. But after this theory, the determination of velocity of light. Actually, the determination of velocity of light was a death blow to the corpuscular theory of light. And another theory that is wave theory of light. Second one, wave theory. Actually, the determination of velocity of light was a that brought to the corpuscular theory of light and a strong support to the wave theory. Wave theory by Christian Huygen. H-U-Y-G-E-N. Christian, Christian Huygen or Huygen. Christian Huygen or Huygen. Both are same. Third one is the quantum theory. Quantum theory by Max Planck. That is E equals H2. That consists of packets of quantum. And the fourth one, that is electromagnetic theory. Electromagnetic theory by James Clerk Maxwell. These are the four theories in radiation. So what are the theories in radiation? You must remember the theory and also the name of the scientist. Corpuscular theory by Sir Isaac Newton. Second one, wave theory by Christian Huygen. Third one, quantum theory by Max Planck. Fourth one, electromagnetic theory by James Clerk Maxwell. And we are going to study this electromagnetic theory. Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, that is electromagnetic waves. Here, light is propagated in the form of waves, in the form of electromagnetic forms, both electric and magnetic properties. Electromagnetic waves. We are going to study this electromagnetic waves. In electromagnetic waves, depending on the wavelength, or depending on the frequency, there are seven members, we are classified, we are arranging in seven groups. And they are, the first group that is gamma rays. Second, X rays. Third, UV rays, ultraviolet rays. UV rays. Fourth one, that is our visible rays. Then the fifth one, that is infrared rays. That is IR, IR rays. Sixth one, microwaves. Micro rays, microwaves you should say. Seventh one, Radio waves. These are the seven members in the electromagnetic waves. Depending on the wavelength or depending on the frequency, there are seven regions, seven members. And totally, these seven members together we call electromagnetic spectrum. 
electromagnetic spectrum these are the members of electromagnetic spectrum or these are the members in electromagnetic waves this classification these regions are depending on frequency or wavelength you know gamma rays gamma rays this is of shortest wavelength you know shortest wavelength means longest frequency shortest wavelength radiation that is gamma c equals nu lambda nu equals c by lambda c is a constant nu proportional to 1 by lambda nu increases lambda decreases lambda proportional to 1 by nu lambda increases frequency decreases frequency wavelength decreases frequency increases reciprocal relation so shortest wavelength means longest frequency shortest wavelength longest frequency that is gamma rays then we are writing this in the ascending order of wavelength increasing order of wavelength or descending order of frequency decreasing order of frequency the shortest wavelength radiation is gamma the longest frequency radiation is gamma rays then x rays then ultraviolet rays then visible rays this this visible rays there are seven numbers in visible rays also you know it that violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red these are the seven members in electromagnetic spectrum together we call wave g or wave g or Vibgior is the seven members together in visible light. This is the white light. White light consists of the visible light consists of violet rays, indigo rays, blue rays, green rays, yellow rays, orange rays, and red rays. This is Vibgior, you know, Vibgior. So violet is the shortest wavelength rays in visible to human eyes. is visible to human eyes these rays are visible to human eyes so visible rays is called violet is shortest wavelength in visible region so it is longest frequency in the visible rays red is the longest wavelength longest wavelength so shortest frequency Red is shortest frequency, longest wave. So longest visible radiation is red. So we are using red dust danger signal. Red is used for danger signal because it is the longest wavelength radiation with which is visible to human eyes. And infrared rays, that's the fifth one, sixth one, microwaves, seventh one, radio waves is longest wavelength. means shortest frequency so a question to be asked write down the different members in the electromagnetic spectrum in the ascending order of wavelength or write down the names of the seven members in the electromagnetic waves in the descending order of frequency descending order of frequency increase uh, decreasing frequency ascending order of wavelength means increasing wavelength you see what is the seven numbers gamma rays which is of shortest wavelength or longest frequency then x rays then uv rays then visible rays that is from violet to red violet indigo blue green and low orange red their violet is the shortest wavelength red is the longest wavelength then infrared rays then microwaves then radios radios longest wavelength so shortest frequency that is 
this radiation radio is uh, longest uh, shortest frequency longest wave write down the all the members of the electromagnetic spectrum in the descending order of wavelength descending order of wavelength then you write first radios that's the longest wavelength then micros then infrared rays then visible rays then ultraviolet rays then x rays then gamma rays descending order of wavelength write down all the seven members in the electromagnetic waves in the ascending order of frequency ascending order of frequency increasing order of frequency shortest frequency is radios then higher micros then higher infrared then higher visible rays then higher ultraviolet rays then higher x rays then gamma rays the longest frequency so you study the order of this uh, seven numbers in the ascending order of wavelength or descending order of frequency or descending order of wavelength or ascending order of frequency like that any any one order you study well once more i repeating the seven members what are the seven members in electromagnetic spectrum these seven members together called electromagnetic spectrum these radiations are propagated in the form of electromagnetic waves so they are electromagnetic waves so what are they gamma rays x rays ultraviolet rays visible rays infrared rays microwaves radios again a question asked what is electromagnetic spectrum or what are electromagnetic waves or what are ultraviolet and infrared radiations so we can answer like that the radiations from violet to red is visible to human eyes this is the visible region of the spectrum radiation from violet to red is visible to human eyes this is the visible region of the spectrum but extending on either side of this visible region there are invisible radiations invisible radiations only visible is this violet to red all are invisible to human eyes invisible radiation and the radiations just beyond violet we call just beyond violet that is ultraviolet rays the radiations just after red we call infrared radiation the entire range of spectrum that is from point on armstrong unit to 10000 meters we call electromagnetic spectrum the shortest wavelength is 0.1 armstrong unit for radios it is about 10000 meters the entire range is called electromagnetic spectrum because these radiations are propagated in the form of electromagnetic waves 0.1 a degree means 0.1 armstrong unit you know that is the unit of wavelength one armstrong unit is One a degree equals ten raised to minus ten meter. One Armstrong unit one by ten raised to ten meter. One Armstrong unit is zero point one two three four five six seven eight nine one. This much meter is the shortest wavelength. Gamma rays. You will study all the range, wavelength range, frequency range for all these radiations from your book. There is a chart in your book. You in your textbook. there you write all the wavelength range all the frequency range and also the wavelength range for those students preparing for entrance examinations and here so many questions to be asked in multiple choice and for entrance examinations which radius i will uh, repeat the questions and the answer from here itself see which radiation is of longest frequency Answer is gamma rays. Which radiation is of shortest wavelength? Answer is gamma rays. Which radiation is of longest wavelength? Answer is radios. Which radiation is of shortest frequency? Answer is radios. Which radiation visible to human eyes? Which radiation visible of shortest wavelength? Then it is violet rays. Which radiation of visible having longest frequency? That is violet. 
Which radiation of visible Harvey longest wavelength? That is red rays. Which radiation of visible Harvey shortest frequency? That is red ray, red rays. Which radiation in between gamma rays and ultraviolet rays? That is X-ray. Which radiation of greater wavelength of gamma rays and less wavelength of UV rays? X-rays. Which radiation is in between infrared rays and radios? Answer is micros. A radiation whose wavelength is less than radios and greater than IR rays? Answer is micros. Which radiation, which are the radiations in between blue rays and orange rays? Blue rays and orange rays. There are two radiations, green and yellow. Which radiation of visible is in between yellow rays and red rays? Answer is orange rays. Like this, so many questions to be asked. For all, you must study the order of the spectrum. Gamma, X-ray, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, micro, radio, like that. From ascending order of wavelength. According to your convenience, you do it. These are so many questions to be asked like that. Then, what is the use of these radios, you know? Radios are used for radio communication, TV communication, these radios are used. Radios are used for radio and TV communications. Micros are used in radar, you know, and also for other communication systems, these micros are used. And these infrared radiations, they are used for long distance photography. For taking photo of sun, moon, etc. Long distance photography, you are using this infrared rays. Also, this infrared rays are used for radiation therapy. What is radiation therapy? Radiation therapy means using radiation, the treatment of diseases, the treatment of diseases like cancer, tumor, etc. These radiations are used. So, it is called radiation therapy. And you know visible uh, rays, you are using fully the visible light. And UV rays, UV rays are used for this uh, observing objects through microscope. Also this UV rays have bacteriological effect. So for uh, this UV rays are used for uh, destroying bacteria, for healing wounds, for healing wounds, healing wounds. And also for observing objects through microscope. X-rays, you know, so many applications for X-rays. X-rays are used for diagnosing diseases. X-rays are used for the treatment of diseases like cancer, tumor, etc. That branch is called X-ray therapy. X-ray therapy is the treatment of diseases like cancer, tumor, etc. using X-rays. And gamma rays also used for so many purposes. These are the members of electromagnetic spectrum. Another question, compare X-rays and visible light. Compare X-rays and visible light. Both X-rays and visible light are EFOs. Compare means similarities and differences. There are similarities and also differences between X-rays and visible light. What are the similarities? The main similarity between X-rays and visible light? That is both of them are both of them are EM waves. EM waves means electromagnetic waves. X-ray is an EM wave. Visible light is an EM wave. Compare X-rays and uh, violet rays. Compare X-rays and blue rays. Compare green rays and X-rays. Compare X-rays and yellow rays. Compare X-rays and red rays. All compare X-rays and visible light. Both of them are EM waves. Another, another similarity between X-rays and visible light. Both of them are traveling in straight line with the same speed. What is the speed? In Newton raised to 8 meter per second. All the members are traveling with the same speed. All are EM waves. So same speed for X-rays and visible light. Main differences. X-rays are not visible to human eyes. Light, visible light means visible to human eyes. So visible light, visible to human eyes. X-rays are not visible to human eyes. 
Another difference, X-rays have high penetrating power. Penetrating power. But light does not. They have no penetrating power. That is the main differences between X-rays and visible light. So the question is compare X-rays and visible light. The similarities, first one, both of them are EMOs. Second one, both of them travel in straight line with the same speed. Differences, one, X-rays are not visible to human eyes, light is visible to human eyes. Second difference, X-rays have high penetrating power, but light does not. We can discuss next some properties of electromagnetic use. Properties of EMOs. Properties of EMOs. Properties of EMOs. First property, EMOs travel in straight line with a speed of 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. EMOs travel in straight line with a speed of 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Second property is EMOs do not require a medium for its propagation. So light from the sun reaches to us, you know, from through vacuum. There is a medium we call. Only light knows that medium. That is ether medium like that. But usually no material medium is required for the propagation of EM. So EM do not require a medium for its propagation. Three, all the members, all the seven members of EM have the same velocity. That is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. All the seven members of electromagnetic wave of the same velocity. And fourth is the velocity of EM wave is given by the expression V is equal to vector E by vector B. This equation you must remember. Problem to be asked in previous EBS examination, there is a problem like that. Vector E are given, vector B given. So, find the velocity of light. The velocity of electromagnetic wave is given by the equation V vector is equal to E vector by B vector. What is V? Vector V? Velocity. Velocity is a vector point. This allomark represents vector. V vector, the velocity of electromagnetic wave equal to vector E is strength of electric field. Strength of electric field. Electric field strength. That is electric field intensity. Vector V, strength of magnetic field. Strength of magnetic field. That is vector B. Magnetic field strength. Magnetic intensity, magnetic flux density, what are the same? So this is the equation for the velocity of electromagnetic wave. The velocity of electromagnetic wave is equal to vector E divided by vector B. Where vector E is the strength of electric field, electric field strength. Vector B is the strength of magnetic field, magnetic field strength. And the Electric field and the magnetic field is the fifth property. The fifth property is the electric field and magnetic field in EM are perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. That is the fifth property. This is velocity. The wave is propagated in this direction. This is the direction of electric field. This is the direction of magnetic field. This means electric field and magnetic field. Both are vector point, you know. E is mutually perpendicular. Means at an angle 90 degree. Velocity, direction of propagation of EM and magnetic field. Both of them are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of So velocity wave. This angle is 90. This angle is 90. This angle is 90. 
Electric field and magnetic field in EM wave are perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular, both of them are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the. That is the fifth property. Another property is that the sixth property that is the energy of electric field, you know, vector V is equal to vector E by vector V. The energy of electric field and energy of magnetic field in EM wave are equally distributed. The energy in the electric field, electric field strength and magnetic field strength are equal. Consider EM wave with 100 joule energy, then energy of electric field is 50 joule, energy of magnetic field also 50 joule. We studied in magnetism in detail, this equation also will derive in magnetism. Velocity is electric, etc. You know. So, velocity, the energy, that is the sixth property, energy of EM that is with the magnetic energy and electric energy. The value of the magnitude of electric field and the value of uh, magnitude of magnetic field are equal. So, the energy, the electric field and magnetic field, the energy of electric field and the energy of magnetic field in EM are equally distributed. You know, the velocity of EM wave is given by V vector is equal to vector E by vector V. The optical property, you know, the main property of light is optical property. Vision. The vision in electromagnetic wave is because of this electric field, because of this vector E, Vector V is equal to vector E by vector V. This vector E is the reason for vision. Or we say the optical property in electromagnetic wave is because of vector E. So, vector E in EM wave is known as light vector. Light vector. Kaanan karanam pannanam. Electro, electric field. Light is electron, electric field, vision. So, the optical property that is vision in electromagnetic wave is because of vector E, electric field. So, the electric field in EM wave is known as light vector. So, what is what? Light vector, electric field strength, electric field intensity in light is light vector. And these are the main properties of electromagnetic waves. First one, electromagnetic wave travel in straight line with a speed of 300 raised to 8 meter per second. Electromagnetic wave do not require a medium for its propagation. Uh, electromagnetic wave, all the members in electromagnetic wave have the same velocity. The velocity of electromagnetic wave is given by V vector is equal to vector E by vector V. And the electric field and magnetic field in EM wave are mutually perpendicular or they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. The optical property in EM wave is because of electric field. So, electric field in EM wave is known as light vector. These are the main properties of electromagnetic wave. You know spectrum in the electromagnetic spectrum or spectrum is classified into emission spectrum and absorption spectrum. Spectra may be classified into two. One is emission spectra. Another is absorption spectra. Emission spectrum and absorption spectra. These are the two different types of spectra. Emission spectra is the direct spectrum. Absorption spectrum is light absorbed by a medium and the then re-radiated re spectrum. Both emission spectrum and absorption spectrum, they are of three different types. The first one is line spectrum. Second one is band spectrum. And the third one is continuous spectrum. These are the three different types of spectrum, both emission or absorption. 
So spectra firstly classified into emission spectra and absorption spectra. Emission spectra are of three different types. Absorption spectra are also three different types. Line spectra means it consists of number of bright lines separated by dark spaces. Number of bright lines separated by dark spaces. Band spectra consists of number of bright bands separated by dark spaces. Number of bands, bright bands separated by dark spaces. That is band spectra. Continuous spectrum consists of all the colors from violet to red continuously present without any dark spaces. That is continuous spectrum. An example for a continuous spectrum is, you know, rainbow is an example for a continuous spectrum. Rainbow. It is an, uh, it's a continuous absorption spectrum. Rainbow is a continuous absorption spectrum. Rainbow. The most uh, spectacular display of spectrum of sunlight. That is rainbow. Rainbow is the most spectacular display of spectrum of sunlight. It is a continuous absorption spectrum. Light is absorbed by the water drops present in the atmosphere. And then it is re-radiated. The light is absorbed by wa water drops. And then re-radiated spectrum is rainbow. We will study it in optics. Rainbow. Primary rainbow, secondary rainbow, like that, that you will study later. So, this is the different types of spectra. Different types of spectra. Spectra may be classified into emission spectra and absorption spectrum. Emission spectra of three different types. Absorption spectra also three different types. They are one line spectrum, two band spectrum, three continuous spectrum. Line spectrum consists of number of bright lines separated by dark spaces. Band spectrum consists of bright bands separated by dark spaces. Continuous spectrum consists of all the colors from violet to red continuously present without any dark spaces. These are the different types of spectrum. Spectra. Again, we are discussing two or three points about a general application questions from this chapter. This is uh, you don't want to study in detail, just uh, just a base for studying optics and here are three different points you know nowadays in nation we are discussing the global warming and weather changes kalavastha vidyanum aavola thavanum now a topics for discussion in all world weather changes global warming etc so we are discussing three points one is Greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect. Then nuclear winter and Frankhofer lights. Greenhouse effect. Nuclear winter. Frankhofer lights. You know greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect. What is greenhouse effect? You know, light from the sun reaches to earth. Only a small part of this light is absorbed by the earth's surface. You know, this is earth. This is earth. And the sun rays reaches to earth. The sun rays reaches to earth. Only a small minute part of this light is absorbed by the earth's surface. Most of the light, about 90% of light, reflected from earth's surface. It is again reflected back to earth by the clouds. Clouds, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, dust, etc. present in the atmosphere. So what happens to earth? Light from sun reaches to earth. So we are discussing about greenhouse effect. Light from the sun reaches to earth. Only a minute part of this light is absorbed by the earth. The major part of light is reflected from earth's surface. It is again reflected back to earth by the clouds, carbon dioxide, dust particles etc. present in the atmosphere. So earth becomes warm. This phenomenon of Warming of earth is called greenhouse effect. 
usually a general application question to be asked. Why we feel warm on cloudy days? Why we feel warm on cloudy days? This is the answer is greenhouse effect. To explain it, you will explain the greenhouse effect. Light from sun reaches to earth, only a minute part is absorbed by the earth, the major part is reflected from earth's surface, it is again reflected back to earth, the clouds present in the atmosphere. So earth becomes warm and this phenomenon of warming of earth is called greenhouse effect. A reverse of this phenomenon, that is this nuclear winter. We are imagining a global nuclear war. Global nuclear war. Global nuclear war. So the dust, carbon dioxide, etc. form a cloud in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, dust, uh, carbon monoxide all form a cloud fully in the atmosphere. Because of this war. Iraq, Uthanda, Iraq, in a part of the the global nuclear war. Where the Jutum Kauri the clouds form the solar radiation, sun rays, just reflected from this cloud. Means solar radiations will not reach to earth. All radiations reflected by these clouds. So what happens? Earth becomes cool. And this cooling of earth is called, cooling of earth is called nuclear winter, cooling of earth. This is warming of earth. So reverse of this. So what is nuclear winter? Imagine a global nuclear war. The dust, carbon dioxide, etc. form a cloud around earth. The solar radiations now uh, reflected from this cloud, so the solar radiations will not reach to earth, so earth becomes cool and this phenomenon of cooling of earth is called this nuclear winter. Uh, the solar radiations are created by the sun. That phenomenon is called nuclear winter. And Fraunhofer lines, you know, you imagine the solar spectrum, light is the spectrum of sunlight, solar, you know, spectrum of sunlight, very solar spectrum. In the solar spectrum, when we are examining, in the solar spectrum, you see number of Dark lines on a bright background. When you are examining the solar spectrum, number of dark lines on a bright background. These lines are lines are first observed by Fraunhofer, scientist Fraunhofer. So these lines are called Fraunhofer lines. So what are Fraunhofer lines? The dark lines on a bright background in solar spectrum. Dark lines on a Bright background in solar spectrum. What is the importance of this uh, Fraunhofer lines? What is the significance of the Fraunhofer lines? From the frequencies of these lines, the elements present in sun's atmosphere can be identified. You know, in the uh, near the sun, the, or in the sun's atmosphere, plasma state, enormous temperature of six thousand K. You can't reach there. You path through the what the plasma is going to do? Plasma cannot be contained in any vessel, it can be contained only a powerful magnetic field and the so-called magnetic field we call magnetic bottle. Magnetic bottle, powerful magnetic field which contain plasma. So here the importance of solar, this rank of our lines, what is that? The elements present in sun's atmosphere can be identified from the frequencies of these lines. And what are Fraunhofer lines? So I mentioned their importance. Light from uh, the spectrum of sunlight is solar spectrum. And when the solar spectrum is examined, there are a number of dark lines in a bright background. 
and these lines were first observed by Fraunhofer and are called Fraunhofer lines. The importance is from the frequencies of these lines, the elements present in sun's atmosphere can be identified. The balance of this class, this chapter, continuing on next video. You subscribe all the classes, other classes. You subscribe in the YouTube channel or in Facebook page and every the Facebook page. You continue the class in the next class, next video. The, this chapter, the balance of this chapter, continuing on next video.